So first of all, what a phenomenal day. Uh, I, you know, if I had not been asked to speak here, uh, I would have still loved to have come. So it is, it's incredible to be uh, part of the uh, Greek diaspora to begin with, but uh, absolutely even more incredible to see the talent uh, that's uh, in this room today, both, both on the stage, present company excluded, uh, and, uh, and in the audience. So it's just a, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I have an assignment that Greg has given me, and that is to do the be my best to explain the events in Greece over the last few months, uh, their consequences, and to try to draw some in innovative uh, answers from uh, some of the problems. Now, I liken this to uh, at least several of the 12 labors of Heracles. Um, and like uh, most of you, my inclination is to marvel at how Greece has managed to innovate its way to the bottom of the global economic community at, uh, at such pace. Uh, so we need to start uh, to acknowledge uh, some things up front. Uh, while the facts seem clear, uh, we also need to recognize that those facts come to us through the lens of CNBC, uh, the Chicago Tribune, or more likely from somebody's yaya in Athens. And we're also 5,300 miles away uh, uh, here. So while we gain perspective, uh, we do lose some of the local immediacy and color uh, that Achilles uh, earlier uh, tried to share with us. And finally, uh, I know that you all know that attempting to understand an individual Greek is hard enough. Um, to uh, understand a nation uh, can be exhausting at best and futile at worst. But um, I will have a go at this. I'll, I'll, take, I'll try. And I'll try to build on uh, what uh, Bill Margaritas uh, took us through this morning in, in his, uh, his comments. Uh, so first of all, um, the facts. What crisis? Uh, on the 2nd of May, the IMF and other Eurozone countries agreed to a bailout package with Greece uh, to the order of 110 billion euros, or roughly at the time about $140 billion. And that marked the climax of a tumultuous uh, period of time, uh, more than an, ex an extended period of time, during which, among other things, Greek national debt was downgraded to junk status, which was a Eurozone, Eurozone first. There were three separate attempts by the Greek government to push through spending cuts that were met with strikes and riots in the streets. And embarrassingly, and most embarrassingly, uh, the finance ministry was condemned by the European Commission for falsifying national economic statistics. How much worse could it get? Now, what the bailout package does is it effectively buys Greece some breathing space from the threat of immediate bankruptcy. What it does not do is it does not solve the underlying problem. Now, of course, national debt is a feature of most global economies. So what's the problem with Greece? What's the problem specifically? There are two reasons it's a problem. Two reasons it's a problem. Number one, the sheer scale of the debt amassed over the last decade. It stands at roughly 115 to 120% of GDP which is the largest in the Eurozone. Only Italy comes close. It's larger than the US, and you know how much we've spent over the course of the last 10 years, where debt is about 80% of GDP. So to put it another way, the Greek national debt is comfortably more than the country's entire economic output for a year. The second reason, it's the budget deficit, the amount at which spending exceeds tax revenues. It's kind of, it's the size of the hole in the bucket, if you, if you like to put it that way. In Greece, the budget deficit is a solid 14% of GDP. Again, it's the highest in the region. In the US, again, given our, uh, our positions, it's only about 10%. So this combination of these two factors puts Greece on an incredibly precarious footing. And frankly, in a position of international embarrassment. International investors have effectively lost faith in the country's ability to manage its finances. And this lack of faith in Greece stems from a recognition that the problems are not temporary, but they're the result of underlying structural issues for which there are absolutely no easy solutions. But our job is to come up with an answer. Well, as Archimedes or Pythagoras would tell you, 
the key to the answer lies in the definition of the problem. So let's start by getting into some of the ugly truths. And none of this is going to come as a surprise to you, but it's, it, it's, it'll help set the context. First of all, the public sector. Incredibly, incredibly, incredibly inefficient. Fueled by cheap debt, high profile projects consistently over budget, including the emotional success of the Athens Olympics. Civil service that has been bloated by decades of patronage, by governments of both sides, by the way. To give you a sense of this, over the last decade, public sector wages have nearly doubled. Wages and benefits count for 75% of all government spending. This is a boondoggle at its extreme. Second ugly truth, the black market, the shadow economy, is the largest in the world. One of the members of our audience earlier um, brought up the example of the, uh, of the swimming pools uh, in, uh, in Athens. We know tax evasion is the norm. It's the standard way of operating. The numbers speak for themselves. The Ministry of Finance, now bear in mind, this is the Ministry of Finance that has been uh, playing with the numbers, has even come to the conclusion that uh, less than 5% of Greek taxpayers declare an annual income of more than 30,000 euros, or about $50,000. That leaves about 31 billion euros, 40, 45 billion dollars, off the table in income tax. Third ugly truth, the scale of the bureaucracy, red tape, and corruption is massive. It's an incredibly difficult place for outside investors to do business. Foreign companies are, in, are uncomfortable with Greek processes and legislation. Here's an example. There's a rule that prevents a company from firing more than 2% of its workforce at any one time, for example. Now, the prime minister has gone on the record admitting that corruption is rife. It's one of the major planks of his campaign. So the harsh truth, wrapping this all up, is that Greece has lost significant ground in terms of international competitiveness. Now, what's the net impact of this? While spending has soared, total tax revenues have actually fallen as a per percentage of GDP. They currently sit at about 30%, which is well below an EU average that's uh, significantly north of 40. The numbers just don't stack up. The money flowing in does not match the money flowing out, and the gap is getting worse. Now, this conference is about innovation. And we've had, over the course of today, some fascinating glimpses of the future across uh, a number of areas. Uh, philanthropy, media, uh, tourism, technology, just to name a few. So let me give you my version of how Greece innovates its way forward. Some context first. Much of the media coverage that you've seen about the crisis focuses on the EU and the importance of decisions in Brussels on Greece's future. The Prime Minister spent a good part of, of the month of, uh, of April shuttling between Berlin, Paris, and back to Athens, and Brussels as well. So this is true to some extent. But I want to argue that this is a blinkered view. Greece has a much greater degree of autonomy and an opportunity to define, construct, and manage its own destiny. And I want to repeat this, to define, construct, and manage its own destiny. So in my mind, there are three pillars to this answer. Pillar number one becoming a green giant. Think here of a green colossus of roads. There's an opportunity to make Greece a sustainable world leader. Solar and wind power are clearly both naturally abundant. Ecotourism, given the climate, has much growth ahead of it. The key is to unlocking the potential of foreign investment. 
The prime minister has been in the Middle East and Libya recently discussing exactly this. But to do this successfully, there needs to be a very focused effort on reducing bureaucracy and reducing corruption. There's a task force under the prime minister's guidance and direct command to cut through red tape for investment. Certainly an innovation in Greece. We'll see if it's successful. Greece can become a global leader in climate change innovation. Pillar two, owning the Mediterranean. This is an incredibly interesting, dynamic, intersected part of the world. We have been maritime traders for the millennia. The Greek shipping fleet is second only to China. It has 3,000 vessels and accounts for about a seventh of the world's fleet in terms of dead weight tonnage. The port of Piraeus has an opportunity to establish itself as a key hub for trade between Asia, the Mediterranean, and the Black Sea. The best evidence of this is China's recent commitment to invest over half a billion euros in a terminal. Parenthetically, it's been held up, the investment's been held up by de delays with permits and dock worker strikes. What else? The key here is to make Greece an easier place to do business, to own the Mediterranean. Labor flexibility, minimal red tape, a more transparent tax regime and a corruption-free system. All that has to be, has to be part, of the, part of the puzzle. We can go back to Agamemnon and the Battle of Troy to know the seafaring that's in our genes. So it is an imperative to usher in the next chapter of the maritime industry through this sort of investment and modernization to own the Mediterranean. Pillar number three becoming the gateway to the Balkans. Greece is in a unique position to act as a key facilitator of trade into the Balkan economies. It's a market that is going to continue to grow and will attract more and more attention from the international community. It's got 55 million consumers. It's five times the size of Greece. And there is already a track record in Greek companies of operating in the Balkans, particularly the Greek banks. And while they're going to be hiccups, long term, this is a smart play. Close links to the Balkan countries should be vigorously encouraged. It should be a central tenet of foreign policy. And it needs to figure prominently in the business plans of Greek companies. My point is, is this. There are good, sustainable, structural reasons that Greece can be a leading player. None, and I want to repeat, none of this requires alms from others. What the nation needs to aspire to, in my view, is a return to the Ptolemaic view of the universe, where Greece can regain its spot in the center of the world, and recognition that international finance, as with, mo as with most things, is purely and simply a matter of confidence. So by supporting innovation in the areas of clear competitive advantage, in my view, the three pillars that, that have just been laid out, the government can implement a structural reform that will make Greece a long-term success story. So can it be done? Of course, in part, this is dependent on what happens in the other Euro countries, what happens to the Euro currency itself, and on the global economic recovery overall. And there are a number of question marks here. What is certain is that there will be a period of pain. The austerity measures that have been agreed to as part of the bailout package are severe. They will not be easy to live with, particularly for public sector workers, voters, by the way. But the fact is, they are designed to rapidly work off a decade or more of excess. It's an extreme weight loss diet uh, of sorts. It's not quite Atkins. Maybe it's about putting a rubber band around your stomach. 
but it's what's required. And it seems to be the most sensible course of action for Greece. So the situation is definitely not going to improve overnight. Reducing bureaucracy, improving tax in, uh, enforcement, all these things are going to require political will. They will require specifically bills to pass through Parliament, which is all hard work and tough duty. And there's natural lead times associated with all of this at a time when the markets are particularly sensitive and particularly wary. And this degree of change is going to require a public acceptance and understanding of the situation. In a way, it's a marketing game. We've seen lots of discussions about marketing today. It's the same game that is, uh, needs to be played in Greece. But there is some evidence, newspaper polls is an example, that the tide is beginning to change, so there's some hope. But it's a fight against, as we know, decades of dogma. There are some precedents to the degree of fiscal contraction. Ireland in the mid-80s, a success story now 20 years later, and Sweden in the mid-90s. Comparatively, the task is going to be harder because the measures that are required will take the Greek economy farther into recession. I think we can all understand that this is probably the country's biggest test since the restoration of democracy in 1974. But having the problems laid bare is an important and crucial step. And there is a silver lining here. It's the shadow economy. It's part of the problem, but it is also part of the solution. It represents a huge engine of enterprise that it currently is unaccounted for and untaxed. Probably, by some estimates, as great as 30% of the official GDP figure. That is an incredible amount of entrepreneurial talent, effort, brain power, and commitment that goes under the radar. These are new businesses that stay underground to avoid scrutiny. So by shining the spotlight and bringing some of this activity overground, bringing it out, the government will have the ability to, to produce a more stable platform for the economy and a very powerful driver of growth. That will be hard work. It will require more than a flashlight. It will require several searchlights. What's not in doubt is the inherent talent and initiative of the Greek people. Today's a good example of, uh, of that. You only have to look around this room uh, and outside this room, frankly, for evidence of success. But what is needed is a new paradigm within the country. And to uh, follow what the prime minister has said, an opportunity to say never again and, uh, and really uh, relaunch Greece. So in the spirit of this conference, um, let me end with, uh, with Epicurus uh, to remind us all that the greater the difficulty, the more glory in surmounting it. Ευχαριστώ.